I struggle with this because I'm not against capitalism, but I do think that capitalism uh, intersected with race can be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I think oftentimes, you know, we forget about the working poor, you know what I mean? And there are some people who can't start a business. There are some people who just won't have the access, the resources to do that. The majority of poor people are working, right? So how do we, and then sometimes I hear um, some people say, oh, just start a whole bunch of black businesses and everything's gonna be fine. And I'm like, well, 20% of us work in, in the public sector. So how do we uh, make sure that we, um, that it's not just cap that, cause there's no trickle down. You know what I mean? I, I'm not even sure what the, what the question is. This has been an ongoing debate for, yeah. for decades, but I'm sure you all have heard about this. The answer is just black capitalism. That's gonna solve all of our problems. I'm not sure that's it. What do you think, Dr. Pinkett? Well, I, I, I absolutely believe in the power of entrepreneurship, but I, I, am, I am acknowledging that it is, it is not for everyone. And, and that's not just whether you're poor. There, there's, there's, there's folk with money that aren't built to be entrepreneurs. Uh, but to the poor conversation, I am a, Black businesses tend to employ Black people. Right. And the more we can create black entrepreneurs, the more we create opportunity for black people. And here's how I reconcile your, your, your first uh, dimension. We have to start young. Jeffrey, myself, our two partners, Lawrence and Dallas, we're all broke when we started in business. Absolutely broke. And we had no one in our family who could have afforded to give us any money to start a business. But we hustled. You know, we were on our grind. We worked evenings. We worked weekends. And capitalism, despite its flaws, gave us the opportunity to now create wealth. I mean, we want a $25 million enterprise right now from four kids who started at the ages of 19 and 20 with nothing but you know, dust in their, in their, in their pockets. But to the, to the other side is there's lots of ways to support entrepreneurs if you are with resources without being an entrepreneur. You can invest in Black business owners. You can be in an organization and challenge them to do contracts with black businesses. There's lots of other ways to move that needle on black jobs, black wealth, black business without being a black entrepreneur. And let me add one more thing to that. You know, the, what you described, um, Clay, is, is, is the traditional model of capitalism, which is, can be very exploitative. And right. you know, one of the things we talk about is how you need to have um, a broader way of thinking or conceptualizing uh, entrepreneurship. It can be and should be double bottom line, triple bottom line type of thinking, meaning, you know, we're not just thinking about, OK, this, this is how I'm going to make money. It's also, you know, how, what am I doing um, that the community could, would appreciate? Uh, what can I do with this platform of a business that can benefit the community or the environment for that for that matter? You know, and then there's social entrepreneurship, which uses that same kind of, of thinking and goes even further and says, all right, we're going to use this vehicle of entrepreneurship, but we're going to solve some problems. Or we're going to we're going to hire people who are difficult to employ. You know, we're mm -hmm. going to uh, provide services for the community, but in, terms of, in particular for the black community or for any BIPOC community. We're going to, to do something specific uh, and use this vehicle of capitalism to, to make it happen. Uh, and that, to me, is 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 the kind of you know thinking we we promote in the book. But it, it gets us beyond uh, the conversation about whether capitalism is good or bad. It's about how you use that capitalism. Well, you said BIPOC. I did. What a, what a, what is the BIPOC? Black, Indigenous, and people of color. Oh Lord, I'm behind. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't be mad at me, y'all. I, I think I've heard that before. I just did. Okay, y'all. Yeah, I, I am behind sometimes on the on the uh, the acronyms or whatever. Uh, all right. Um, last question. So we know that sometimes uh, not all black faces in high places are our kinfolk. Mm -hmm. You know, and you see it in politics. You see it in in media. Uh, and I know people have seen it in corporate America that, oh, this person, they, they want to be the only one at the top. You know, they, they, they are not on my they are not on my, my team at all. So how do we navigate those folks who are they made it to a high place, but they are in no way, shape or form uh, advocating for us, even if there was things in place to help them get there. They don't want someone to come come behind them. Some folks look at them as the quote unquote enemy. What are your thoughts on that, Dr. Pinkett? Well, on that note, you know, public enemy, 
said every brother ain't a brother. <laughs> and, that's right. You know, that's that's right. right. And that's that, that that's real. Uh, so first and foremost, you have to call it like you see it. I, I was very disillusioned early in my career, to your point, assuming that my skin folk were my kin folk, only to suffer some very difficult lessons and disappointments when I look to more accomplished African Americans who really weren't there for me and really weren't there for our people. So you gotta, you gotta be discerning to know who you're dealing with and who you're not dealing with. And, and I, I, I would say quite frankly from there, you have to work despite them. You have to work around them. And you have to uplift an example of how you can become a black face in a high place and not be a sellout and still have an agenda that's strategic but unapologetic of helping black people. And one of the, the hidden agendas for the book for us was seeking out examples of people who embody that very ethos so that for the young folk coming up, we can dispel the myth that for you to arrive, you have to water yourself down. You gotta sell yourself out. You gotta compromise your values or your community. No, 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 quite the opposite. In the book, we argue, do not let any of that go. Not only is that your unique, competitive advantage, all the things that make you you, but it also allows you 30, 40, 50 years from now to look in the mirror and still be proud at who you see. You want to add to that, Dr. Robinson? You know, that he's, he said it all. That, that is precisely how we were thinking in the book. We, you know, we know black faces in high places sometimes is used in a pejorative way. You know, we don't have enough there. They're not looking out for us. Well, you know, for us, we, we de definitely are of the mind that you can bring your authentic self and be community conscious and still get to those black faces in high places. Before you go, let me say this. I think this is important. Um, Dr. Robinson, I don't know what your political affiliation is. Uh, D Dr. Pinkett, I'm, I'm, I'm from what I gather from you, I, I believe that you are a, a, a Democrat. Is that accurate or do you not? That, 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 okay. that is accurate. That is accurate. Okay. You too, Dr. Robinson, correct? Yes. Dem okay. Here's what I think is really important. And I think it's important as these midterms are coming up, is that there is this narrative from the other side that Black people are lazy and shiftless and not looking for self-reliance and looking for handouts from the uh, government. We hear the other side saying that. And I just think that is so not true, right? Uh, this idea that only Black Republicans uh, want us to be self, you know, self-sufficient and you know, uh, not depend. But here we, are, here we have folks right here that we know none of us want to be dependent on this government. None of us want to have, none of us want to be victimized in any kind of situation. We all want upward mobility. Uh, if the bootstraps are there, we want to be able to have the ability to pull them up if they are even there. So mm -hmm. I think it's really important that the narrative has been captured from the other side that Black Democrats just want to sit around and wait for the federal government. That is just categorically not true. And so I just think it's important as we as we get into this space and we have a, 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 a Senate race coming up in Atlanta with Reverend Warnock and I guess maybe Herschel Walker. It's just, it's mm -hmm. a whole, it's the way that the narrative has been taken over that somehow this other side just wants government handouts. And it's just categorically not true. I think we want policy. Uh, yes. We want to have a like, thing like the Crown Act in place. It, it's a, there's so many components there. So I just, pre, I just want, I don't know if y'all want to sound off on that, but it's just an important side that I think no one ever talks about that. Yeah, we we want to we want a level playing field. We want to be able right. to to compete uh, and and get the, you know the same kinds of things that other folks have had. And you know sometimes that does require some government intervention, but it does yeah. not mean that we want you want you know everything given to us. We just want to be able to be at that level where where it's we have equal chances and equal opportunity. And that hasn't been the case. And so that's why again even in 2022, there's there's a lot of us who are you know, talking about what those inequalities are and pointing them out um, and, and then looking for policies that will uh, begin to correct it. That, that's absolutely right. And, and it, it is a tool that the right uses to paint a picture that's not reflective of reality. It's, it's a much more nuanced, much more complex conversation uh, that Black people want what all people want. Uh, but it's hard to argue, although people do argue it, when you see 
the inequities that exist, what the data suggests, when I see a corporation with an all white leadership team, uh, like how do you reconcile that? Are you telling me that there were no qualified African-Americans? I look at what's happening in the NFL right now, and which, right. Only, which only, only illuminates what's happening, what, what used to be happening behind closed doors, but now text messages and cell phones and, and, and social media are now bringing to, to light. Uh, we, we have to balance the conversation by saying, you can be liberal and want to see government intervention, but you can also honor the tenets of self-reliance, of economic self-sufficiency, of wanting to work your way for what you earn. And, and those are not contradictory with saying the government also has a role in addressing the very systemic issues that data suggests still exist and persist. Well, I appreciate y'all coming on. And Dr. Pinkett, I didn't even ask you about that previous <laughs> person who was in office. I didn't even ask about it. 45 <laughs> minus you, one. That's what I call him. 45 minus one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And mind, and mind you, I never watched the show, but I remember seeing you after the show, and I really valued the kind of work that you were doing. But I didn't thank even bring right. up that other person. <laughs> I well want to thank y'all for co <laughs> coming on. Right? I'm like, I'm not going to. I just, I don't even He's, that person is not in office. We focus on the now. That's black right. faces in high places, 10 strategic actions for black professionals to reach the top and stay there. Dr. Randall Pinkett and Dr. Jeffrey Robinson. Y'all have a good day. Be safe. All right. Likewise. Be blessed. Be safe.